Time now for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning, seeing a mostly sunny sky over the state today, but starting tonight, some showers possible over the northwest. This will continue as we get into the early morning hours tomorrow, and then a few spotty showers likely Wednesday afternoon, mostly in the form of rain, but still watching for some high mountain snow above 9,000 feet. David? An investigation is likely getting underway this morning into the 27th murder in Albuquerque since January. Police say a homeless man killed someone at a park near 4th Street and I-40. Witnesses told police they saw two men get into a fight early Monday, then one man killed the other. Police arrested Bernest Benjamin, who they say admitted to hitting the victim with a stick. We're learning more about the death of an accused child killer, Thomas Ferguson. Ferguson was found hanging from a sheet in his Santa Fe County jail cell Friday night. Officials say he was charged with torturing and killing 13-year-old Jeremiah Valencia at their home in Nambe was housed in a special unit, but not on suicide watch. Ferguson's son, Jordan Nunez, and Jeremiah's mother, Tracy Pena, are also charged in Jeremiah's death. The man charged in a double murder outside a local church is out of jail after being acquitted. 25-year-old Anthony Kapinski was hanging out with Jordan Mooker and Paul Francia in the church parking lot on Montgomery and Carlisle last June. Police say the men started fighting over car parts. Shots were fired, and Mooker and Francia ended up dead. Kapinski claims self-defense. Jurors agreed unanimously, finding him not guilty on both counts of first-degree murder. Police are asking for your help this morning finding this white suburban. This after they say several firearms were stolen from a gun store, and our firearms was broken into early Sunday morning. The store says four men broke through security bars and a window before making off with multiple firearms. If you recognize the vehicle, you're asked to call Los Lunas Police. President Trump is examining Israeli intelligence that claims Iran covered up a secret nuclear weapons program. On Monday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his government had acquired tens of thousands of documents proving Tehran pursued nuclear weapons while they told the world it only sought civilian nuclear power. The development is likely to play a role in whether the president withdraws from the 2015 Iran nuclear deal on May 12th. As you wake up, Vatican Treasurer Cardinal George Pell will stand trial for sexual abuse offenses. Cardinal Pell will face at least one charge of historical sexual abuse. The 76-year-old stands accused of sexually abusing multiple people in his hometown of Melbourne. He still denies the claims. New this morning, a new face will sit on the New Mexico Supreme Court bench. New Mexico Supreme Court Justice Gary L. Klingman was sworn into office yesterday. Governor Susana Martinez appointed Klingman in April to fill the vacancy created by the retirement of Justice Edward Chavez. Klingman previously served as a district judge in Lee County. Happening today, hundreds are expected to attend May Day March across New Mexico. International Workers' Day is celebrated annually since 1891. Organizers say the events are in support of immigrants and to bring attention to deportations under the Trump administration. The focus this time around, though, will also be on issues surrounding the Me Too movement and sexual assault in the workplace. A neighbor sent an anonymous complaint about a home near Academy and Eubank this weekend with concerns that another neighbor is feeding too many birds, thus drawing in rodents and droppings. Now they want to get the city involved. The homeowner does, uh, tells us that he does feed birds in feeders that are off the ground. The city says it will check it out, but the only rule on the books so far prevents hand feeding of pigeons. Okay, take a look at this. About a thousand homes evacuated this morning. They all are by that raging fire in north central Arizona. That fire continues to grow, burning an unknown number of structures. Officials say at last check, the tinder fire has grown to more than 8,600 acres. This, as the governor declares a state of emergency. Officials say this fire sparked on Friday. At last check, it's still 0% contained. New this morning, fire crews are working to contain a fire that's burning nine miles west of Española in the Santa Fe National Forest. At last check, that fire has now grown to 20 acres. According to the U.S. Forest Service, the Chicoma fire sparked yesterday afternoon. Crews are attacking the fire from the air and ground. A 20-person hotshot crew is on the way. Officials say winds whipping in the area helped the fire grow. There's no word on its containment this morning. On to some breaking developments for you this morning. Rescue crews searching for any possible survivors after a fire rips through an abandoned building in the middle of Sao Paulo. Officials now saying there were squatters inside the building. At least one person confirmed dead, killed when the building collapsed. In the video, you can see the fire spread from floor to floor until it collapses to the ground, sending up a plume of smoke into the air. Fire officials say flames are now spreading to nearby buildings as crews work to get all of this under control. Kristen. Today's metro threat index the same as yesterday, up to a five for the breezy to windy conditions. The dry conditions with humidity less than 15 percent and high fire danger red flag warning kicks in 11 a.m. this morning. David. 
Looking ahead, you have a week to register for the upcoming June primary election. Now this year, not only can you register online, but you can also request an absentee ballot. You can also update voter registration and check on important election dates. County clerks will send absentee ballots to voters who have applied for one next month. You can find a link for more information at always on krqb.com. On to new details now, UNM President Garnett Stokes says they should reveal how they will decide which sports teams to cut soon. The athletic department's plan to shore up a deficit includes cutting teams to save almost $2 million a year. According to the Albuquerque Journal, at a campus town hall meeting, Stokes says they've made no specific decisions, but are close to explaining how they will measure and assess programs. And looking ahead, Facebook and CNN uh, will soon be rolling out a digital marketing certificate program this fall. CNN will be the first community college in the nation to offer the course. Facebook says the program aims to keep the workforce up to date with new tech details. Okay, drivers, listen up. As you head out to fill up on gas this morning, you should know gas prices are creeping towards their highest level in four years. The average cost of a gallon is now $2.81. That's 42 cents higher than about a year ago. The average here in New Mexico is still 276, still below the national average. At least we have some good news. New this morning, a new study suggests more female heart patients need to be included in certain clinical trials. Now, the study looked at uh, men and women in cardiovascular trials involving new drugs over 10 years and found women were underrepresented in studies and for heart failure and coronary artery disease. Kristen? Time now for a check on traffic. Nothing major out there when it comes to crashes, just some minor slowing on Paseo eastbound approaching the big eye. Okay, time for my favorite story of the day. Take a look at this video. You have to stop what you're doing. The Denver Barbarians, a rugby club, is trying their first aerial fitness workout here. The hammocks help the team channel their inner acrobat, putting them in pretty interesting poses there, stretching their hips, engaging their core. It's ordered by their physical therapist. Instructors say the class helps to develop balance and flexibility needed for this sport. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever thought you'd see a rugby team doing this? Some big boys. Uh huh. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of extra weight to be holding up with those little <laughs> little things of uh, rope or sheets, I guess. All right, very cool. Time now for the five facts. Number five, music fans, listen up. You can now scoop up concert tickets for twenty dollars all week. Live Nation selling the lower price tickets to more than two thousand shows across the country. It's part of the company's National Concert Week, which runs through Tuesday, May eighth. Tickets are available on Live Nation's website. They do include numerous shows in Albuquerque later this year, like Keith Urban, Def Leppard, and Dirk Bentley. And number four, we expect to find out who may have been impacted by card skimming devices and where. Police say they found Jose Machado and accomplice Stephen Allen with card readers. Those are blank cards with missing chips and devices to reproduce cards. Now, a th detectives say they also found a booklet with handwritten entries of people's names and all of their information. Allen claims someone put the programs on his computer and the readers in his backpack. Both men are facing charges this morning. At number three, looking at slightly cooler temperatures today in the mid 70s, we've got windy conditions returning to the state that will fuel critical fire danger today. Starting tonight, some showers over the northwest. This continues on and off through the day tomorrow. Temperatures falling below average with temps only in the 60s through midweek. Number two, now the Carson National Forest in northern New Mexico will soon be implementing fire restrictions. Forest officials made the announcement about the restrictions, pointing to forecasts that are expected to include little moisture and an increase in drought. The restrictions will take effect Monday and will remain in place until further notice. The restrictions do include campfires, smoking, and even fireworks. The Cibola National Forest is also expected to impose tougher restrictions. And at number one, an Albuquerque, Albuquerque police officer charged with drunk driving when he crashed his patrol car has resigned. Joshua Maliki, the then APD officer, was just a week away from a jury trial in that case. This morning, we're waiting to see if a judge will agree to his recent request to skip a jury trial. He's instead hinting that he's ready to plead. Last August, Maliki was arrested after officers say he drove drunk, crashed his police unit, and left the scene after he got into a fight with his wife. Now, Maleki was suspended. The judge still needs to approve the latest motion for the plea hearing.